it'll pop up on your screen. Hey, hey. we're live, Facebook live. Uh, I'm Wild Joe. This is Dive Bar Comedy. I'm very excited about our lineup tonight because uh, it's a lot of my favorite people. I love it. The more we do this show, the more awesome people are joining on. And these are uh, a lot of our faves from many shows past. So anyway, uh, let's get to our theme song. I'm going to have Carol Newell play our theme song by the late and great GT. And uh, then we will start talking to our comics and doing interviews and finding out what's going on in their lives. <laughs> Richard. I'm not going to lie. The uh, the song made me laugh. Yo. <laughs> the song made me laugh. I don't know if it was the lyrics, the repetition of the lyrics, <laughs> the, the, the one note bass line mixed with the one note melody. Maybe all of it put together just kind of made me laugh. I don't know if it was the lyrics. Well, it's good. Somebody's got it. Somebody uh, is uh, second device on going. two devices and they're getting feedback. So if you're, if you're watching on your second device on your laptop or something, mute it. Because uh, we're getting a crazy feedback loop right now. So, all right. Oh, that was mayhem. That was Trust right, me, I know how bad my voice sounds. That couldn't have been fun for all of you. You know what? It, it's better than the mic <laughs> feedback, though, when you're at a club and the mic gets too close to the speaker and it does that eh, like know, sweeping thing. That's Back. the worst. But uh, anyway, Richard, I was uh, mentioning right before the show that I love the bar you're in. And uh, you told me that's a real life place that you've been. Oh, yeah. This is Consilience uh, Winery up in Los Olivos, actually. And then you were saying it's like the best wine and you have, have 50 bottles, which by the way, that means you're not an alcoholic because no alcoholic could save 50 bottles of wine and not drink them all. No, I, I, have, I have 500 bottles. So oh. that you, know, like, you might be an wow. alcoholic. That way I can drink 50 and not miss them. <laughs> wow. So, uh, Richard, so you enjoy wine tasting. I'm sure a lot of that's shut down and visiting the wineries. And uh, can you tell the people about your, your wine storage for your 500 bottles? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I do. I miss, I, I need a trip to wine country. In fact, uh, yes, I can tell them about my wine storage. So I keep about 200 bottles here at home. And then I keep the rest in like a storage facility like a wine storage facility um at like overland in venice in culver city wow. and there's about 300 bottles there in two big cages and i have an addiction to buying wine well yeah. that, that's fun that's a lot of fun oh. and uh, it's a hobby you probably have friends that are into the same thing right that you could talk about wines together and stuff no 
No. <laughs> no. No. In fact, I have to keep wine in the house that I call idiot wine. Oh. For my uh, friends who, because they don't know anything. And then they'll come, they're like, hey, let's open something nice. So you open like an $80 bottle of wine and they're like, oh, I don't know, it tastes like grape juice mixed with gasoline. So I like have to buy like, you know, 11, 12, $13 bottles of wine that I can open with my idiot friends, but they're like scored really high so I can drink them too. So I actually can tell you like, if you want to buy like an 11 or $12 bottle of wine that tastes like a $40 bottle of wine, like I know those. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah. That's great. And yeah. uh yeah, we should uh, have you in the chat listing out your special wines. Maybe we can have a special wine with Richard episode. Uh, uh, here, I'll share one with you right now. <laughs> here, I'll share one. I just pulled this one right out of the fridge next to me here. This is a 1975. Ooh. Damn. Let me shut my light off. Hold on a second. So this is a 1975 Chateau Mouton Rothschild. Damn. And uh, the cool thing about Mouton is that if you look at the label, if you can see it, I'm trying not to let it wash out on the background, but the label, they hire famous artists every year to do the label. And in 1975, this was the Warhol label. Wow. Right. And he painted the Baron. So it's Baron Rothschild's actually on the label that year, but this is 75 Rothschild. So when people talk about like, crazy wines this is probably about this is a half bottle i got two of these it's probably worth about 300 bucks jesus wow wow that's in nice if somebody, if somebody came to your day. house i gotta say richard if We're somebody came to your house and bought you a 15 dollar bottle of wine would you be insulted <laughs> not at all my one of my buddies who's a huge comedian bought me like a 20 dollar bottle of wine for my birthday last year and it was amazing it was scrumptious and delicious it's not about the cost of the wine. It's about literally the wine. And if you buy it at Ralph's, it's going to taste like garbage. Go to a wine <laughs> store to buy your wine. Seriously. All right. All right, Richard. Richard, uh, sorry we didn't get into talking much about your comedy, but uh, quickly, you're an East Coast guy. Where are you from? Uh, originally Long Island and then Manhattan. All right. All right. And... Uh, do you have anything you want to plug? Any projects you're working on that you want people to, to check out? Yeah, actually, I've got a couple of things. I've got a television show that I directed for cable television for uh, JLTV, Jewish Life TV. We're in 90 million homes. Uh, the name of the show is called Kosher Kush. And that pilot is going to air soon. So keep your eye out for that. And then uh, it's literally about a kosher weed farm up north. And it's a reality show. It's true story. It's a true oh, deal. Fun. And then every Sunday you, or every other Sunday, you can see me on uh, with my writing partner, Jeremy Hotz, the very funny comedian, Jeremy Hotz on the uh, miserably, the official miserably Jeremy Hotz fan page. We do 30 minutes of really nothing. And like, 50 <laughs> <laughs> so tune into the hot show every other Sunday. Cool. Well, I can tell that you could fill 30 minutes with no problem, Richard, because you're a very funny guy and fun yeah. to talk to. So I uh, can't wait to hear your set tonight. You're amazing, Joanna. I'm so happy to be here tonight. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the show. All right. Let's get to, uh, I'm going backwards order on my screen, which doesn't really matter, but let's go backwards. Sid Williams. I see Hello. you there. Hi. What's going on, Sid? How have you been uh, keeping up during this quarantine time? I've been aging and thriving. I'm generally antisocial and an introvert, so this is kind of perfect for me. Um, I've been making the best of it, hanging out at home. I already had COVID. I got it uh, New Year's Day. Oh, uh, nice. No, yeah, New Year's Day, that was the, the email that I got. I had no symptoms. I just chilled in my uh, second room for about a week. And I probably gained six pounds when I had COVID, actually, because I just sat But What was this email, the email that said your results are positive or the email yeah, saying? Po yeah, positive, yeah. Oh, so, okay. Positive email. Okay. Yeah, I got yeah, that. Yeah, no, I thought it might be your friend emailing like, "Hey, sorry about last night." Uh, hey, dude, that's so <laughs> <good. laughs> yes, so good. in your butt. <laughs> yeah. Hey, dude, remember when I spit in your mouth? I have COVID. That's kind of how. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't mean to sneeze on you. Yeah. All right. Well, join the club. I've had COVID, and Carol's had COVID, and I don't know. I got it for Christmas. Hell yeah. It feels good. It feels good to be through it, and 
you know, they say maybe you can catch it again, but I feel pretty much immune walking around. I'm not washing my hands anymore. I'm touching doorknobs, sticking my fingers in people's mouths. Now like, you're <laughs> We're back. Uh, <laughs> we're back with the antibodies hell yeah uh, all right sid uh so uh what else what what comedy have you been doing virtual shows live shows what have you been doing so this is actually my first show since uh march i had a show no you know, yeah i haven't done a zoom show at all i was kind of refusing Why? for a long time and then i just i finally broke you're an anti-zoomer i was an anti-zoomer and i think i'm about to uh i think i'm about to convert tonight i'm zoom, curious. zoom curious and i think wow. i'm gonna give in tonight I actually already have been. I'm curious. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah, so I haven't right. done anything. I've been writing a lot, but I haven't been performing anything. We better be nice to you then. Please, please. Yeah, I'm very sensitive. And, uh, you know, yeah. yeah, just like your first lover. Don't think it's all going to be this good. Just because it's this good the first time. <laughs> well, your like next, your your next show should other be people, mine. It might not be as good, you know? I'm probably going to call okay. you and try to get back together here in a few weeks. <laughs> All right, Sid. Well, welcome to the show. That's exciting. We're popping your Zoom cherry. And, uh, but you've been doing comedy a long time. How long have you been doing stand up? Um, before COVID was four years. Okay. So, yeah. Because I didn't get the feeling that you would be an anti Zoomer. Maybe because you just love that live feel. I do love the live feel. And honestly, I kind of thought, like, I was like, eh, I'll, just, I'll just wait till it comes back and I'll just like write hella material in the meantime. And then, uh, you know, we've been locked down for like 10 months. So it's just got, it's gone longer than I thought. You know, I thought it was going to be like three weeks or whatever. So. It's getting worse and worse. Honestly, like my, my kids are one, like one and a half and three years old. And so they had a doc, they were supposed to have their scheduled doctor's appointments. I scheduled them together. And then I got a message that the one, the three-year-old has to do a telephone visit with her doctor because they're not seeing anyone over two in the office. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. I have to bring one of them in and then go home and rush to get on the phone about the other one. And what are you going to tell me on the phone? That's that one I don't of many examples of tomfoolery in COVID. There's a lot of weird rules like that. Like the, I saw, you know, the, the meme that's going around, that's like, it's like a picture of a outside of a restaurant and they have the tent set up so you can eat outdoors, but the tent is completely closed in. So it's like, yeah. you have to be outdoors, yeah. but when you're outdoors, you have to be indoors, outdoors. I don't know. It's a popular. It email. doesn't even make sense. Yeah. It's right. it's like, whatever, I guess. You're right. Wow. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, I'm glad you broke your uh, Zoom cherry. I'm and happy uh, to Thank you. I'm happy to be your, your first show. Thank you. All right, Sid. Let's see who else we got. Carolyn Langford back. Hello. So happy to have you back. And you look amazing. I, your hair looks like well, it always looks poofy, but it looks even more poofy today. You know what poofy means in England, do you? <laughs> no, I'd like to know. Poofy. Well, I do. It's a bit poofy. It means they're a oh. bit poofy. Like, no. okay. Guy is like poofy. sissy. Like a sissy. No, well, gay. A poofy. Um, yeah. So you okay. said my hair's gay. He's a poofster. <laughs> well, you guys call cigarettes fags, so, I mean. Yeah. And that hair <laughs> looks like it has sucked some dick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the joke wrote itself. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know, there was Richard with his wines. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to talk about uh, American Spirit 2021. Uh, very oh good mellow blend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You know, when people come and they turn up with, 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 I don't know, Malbro or whatever. Look, I don't want to be offensive to them. So I just sort of, um, you know, I accept their Malbro, but please. Now, don't just buy your, your American spirit <laughs> or your Malbro in, in, in a supermarket. You want to go to a, a tobacco sh shop. Isn't that right, <laughs> Richard? I, I, for sure. Are you kidding? Look how healthy you look. I've never felt better. Okay. And you I've never sounded less kids. like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet. I bet you those American spirits are more than a few weeks old. Ah, I got screaming going on. I got a heckler here. Well, I haven't left the house in in a year. It will be here on February fourth. Sorry, Carolyn. I'm getting heckled by my own baby. Yeah. Jesus, I'm gonna have to mute myself. <laughs> Is there anything you want to plug? Uh, any anything you're working well, on? Just, you want to plug? Well, I just had a series out on TV. 
but in Israel, not here in the United States, but hopefully it will cut, it will get here too. Um, but not a comedy, a dramatic series. Um, awesome. I filmed it a year ago, before, actually more than a year ago, a, a year and a half ago before uh, COVID. COVID. Exactly. Uh, I was in Israel filming and now, and now it just came out, but I couldn't go to the premiere. And of course, so we did a sort of premiere on, on, uh, oh, no. um, mm. you know, which was an uh, odd time for me because they're all in Israel, but it, but it was, you know, it's good to have something going on. And um, otherwise I'm, I'm here in my underground bunker. I, get, I make sure that I never, uh, you know, uh, I got, you know, don't have enough of these. This <laughs> and uh, otherwise, things are great. Things are marvelous. They're lovely. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Welcome back to the show. It's been a few months since we've had you on, and uh, yes. and we missed you. So I'm happy to see you again. Thank you. I'm happy to All be right. here. All right. Let's see who else we got. Seth Woodward. Hey, hey, hey. How's your zooming? Uh, you're the only one who couldn't figure out the background. My, no, I, my computer's a piece of shit and can't do it. It says oh. I need a better version of Mac. It's just a piece yes. of crap. Oh, wow. Okay, oh, well, I'm yeah. on my phone because I feel like the, the iPhone is like really good with Zoom for some reason. But uh, anyway, so Seth, uh, what, what have you been doing the, during this time? How have you been staying busy doing shows, live shows, or what have you been uh, doing? I started teaching third grade. Um, I, yeah, I took a break from stand up and I got a job as a elementary school teacher. Hey. And had you been teaching before already? Uh, I was teaching for after school programs and never in a full time capacity, but now I'm teaching third grade full time. Ah, that's uh, great. Yeah. And that's all online, right? No, that's in person. Oh, Orange wow. County wow. has different rules. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, they. So have, uh, you had, have you had COVID yet? I'd be surprised. I have had COVID. I almost died of it in March. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, no, I lost like 20 pounds in two weeks. Wow. Oh, wow. I gained wow. so much more back. But March, <laughs> that was like when COVID was first coming to the US. Yeah, it was, it was like, I, I remember leaving a school and going back to my apartment and just lying down for two weeks. Like, oh, I, my gosh. Wow. Well, you're a survivor then. That's amazing. I wouldn't say survivor. <laughs> well, if you almost died. Yeah. I, I barely survived. I, if anything, it was because everyone else was surviving that I survived. They just brought me food and stuff. Mm. In the wild, I would be dead. <laughs> wow. wow. So uh, where are you from originally? How, uh, Orange how County. Uh, Orange County, and I'm sorry for it. <laughs> <laughs> So you're always from Orange County. You're an Orange County native. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, cool. Well, I like Orange County. And yeah, you're right. They're a lot more loose with their restrictions. And I don't uh, have any. Uh, most people don't wear masks out here. It's kind of fucking scary. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, probably everybody there is already. I mean, who knows? Maybe they already all had it by now. But <laughs> they say LA is a hot spot. They never say Orange County is a hot spot. So they're walking yeah. around mask free and going we're to like, restaurants but they're not catching it somehow we're dealing it with like how white families deal with problems we're just not talking about it <laughs> like secret they're keeping their numbers under wraps yeah we're just like no COVID doesn't exist i don't, I don't know oh, what you're man. About. man all right well welcome to the show Thank it's you. gonna be a fun show so all right let's see who else we got chip nicholson hey i like your i like your bar thank Oops. you I can see a lot of depth there. I like it. And, it's natural, uh, right? and this is what your second or third time on our show. So something like that. Yeah. I'm I honored. That. Thank you for having me back. I love it. I kind of have a rotation, but it's getting longer and longer. So it takes like three months in between. Uh, Ain't nobody mad the same person on. Yeah. No, that's fine. No, I'm just honored to be back. I would also like Richard. I would also like to present uh, to you a bottle of wine. This is a 2019 Snoop Dogg. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah, you got the Snoop wine? <laughs> wait, is it wait, is it I, wait I, I have to get this. I have to get this wine. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw, I got a whole thing in the email about it. 
Yo, Richard, it's dope. Yo, and like, you know about the whole bottle and everything, right? I do. It's so dope. I, I do. One, and then I have a, I have another one. It's so cool. It's so cool. Uh, sorry, for everyone Tell else Tell us who what, know, what we need to know about this bottle. Exactly. So for everyone else who doesn't know, so this is called, uh, this is 19 cr Crimes Wine, right? Right. And the cool thing about this 19 Crimes Wine is it, it has an app, right? And the app you, uh, it ha actually has usually not, usually it's not Snoop Dogg or anything. Usually it's someone who committed a crime in the past, like someone back in like old school, like minor days, like all of that, right? And they committed some kind of crazy crime. And then you put your phone on their picture and the picture on your phone comes to life and starts talking to you and tell them how they died from their crime. Wow. So it's insane. Dude. That's fun. Dude. Now, yeah. do, you know, do you know what's in that bottle? Uh, wisdom and good health. Bro, one of my favorite grapes. The reason <laughs> why I have to taste that wine is because it's Petite Syrah and Zinfandel. I'm not a huge Zin fan unless it's old vine, but I collect Petite Syrah. And that's mm. just that big well, dark. Look at you. Look at me. <laughs> wow. Well, I love it. It's so cool. Oh, my God. I love it. 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 I love no, so we dumb. just come, a couple guys come over, everybody's tested, we all sit around, we open a few bottles, like a bunch of headliner buddies of mine, like, but you're invited. Yo! Chip is a headliner. <laughs> oh. I'll be the judge of that. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm wow. kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. We've already worked together. All right, well, <laughs> this is gonna be exciting. I'm excited about this. So, Chip, uh, you have anything that else besides your wine you want to talk about? Any uh, projects or anything you're doing? So, right now, a project that I'm currently working on is uh, I'm, I'm creating a mini cartoon. Uh, so, uh, like, I'm going on Omegle, and then I'm just, like, basically just having a podcast on Omegle and talking to random people all over the world and stuff. And then I create that, and, uh, or I take that audio, and I make, I'm making a cartoon out of it. And I have, I have a couple episodes that I'm making and then I'm just gonna give everybody that, hopefully, hopefully people like it or something, but I just, oh, I, I, this is some, a project that I, I've always wanted to like make a cartoon. And these are just stick figures that I'm doing. Yeah. It's just like, it's, uh, and it's not, I'm not drawing them, but it's like all online and you can create these stick figure things or whatever. I'm just, it's, I, I'm, I'm excited about it. So uh, oh, look forward fun. to that. Yeah. Nice. Right. Nice. Oh, well, that's exciting. All right, Chip. Well, I think you're our last comic to talk to, so we can get on started with the show. Nobody wants to go first because uh, I guess they're so shy. But uh, Mr. C, Mr. C, uh, how are you been? Anything you want to talk about before we start the show? Oh, no, I'm chilling pretty good and whatnot. You know, COVID's chilling down. We got the president thing sorted out. You know, we're getting screwed over <laughs> by the new guy, too, already. And what you expect and whatnot. You know, same most stuff. We got a little six hundred dollars. That shit's almost gone. I'm a little pissed about uh, that. And whatnot. But I'll get my other fourteen hundred. Um, the one good thing that is happening is I'm gonna be working with the new channel, Wale Dot Rocks. So check that out. Pass that to skit bags and we ready to get into the dial bar comedy show. I got, All stuff, right. I got stuff. Oh, I got stuff to say. I got stuff to say. Oh, Carol wants to go up. All right. All right, um, Carol, you want to just go first or what? You, you want to be our volunteer. Not so much a set, I just have announcements if I can. Oh, you have an announcement. Oh, I see. All right. So, Mr. You know, C, let's know. talk to I'm Carol. Going. I'm sorry, I shows. forgot about our favorite person, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> I got shows. I got shows in different, in different areas. Oh, yeah, <laughs> 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 and you got oh, live hard men. Oh, yeah, live hard men. I do. Uh, uh, shows in a different, different area. <laughs> you guys. Uh, just real quick, last Saturday we had the Carpool <laughs> Comedy Show for, uh, for January. It was amazing, successful, and uh, we have our next Carpool Comedy on February 20th. Uh, if you uh, d direct message me, Carol Newell, or the World's Best Laugh, I will give you a discount code to come to that. 
Uh, we are going to have Ahmed Ahmed as our headliner. He is internationally uh, known. He's been in movies. He's been on TV. Look him up. He's famous. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then we're going to have a whole lot of funny people for that. So I just wanted to plug the Carpool Comedy Show for February. Get in early, get your tickets, because it's going to fill up fast, you guys. <laughs> and then, of course, I'm still doing, you know, Saturdays at Pan Pacific. In fact, on this coming Saturday, there's going to be somebody who is here at this show at Ooh. my Pan Pacific Park, you guys. Guess who it is? Ooh. It is Mr. C. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Get him, Mr. C. Saturday. Yeah. yeah. So get in the street. Uh, Come out and support that. Pan Pacific, it's open air. It's an amphitheater. The rows are six feet apart. It's socially distant. Wear your mask. Bring a blanket. Bring a snack. Come and hang out. It's a beautiful day at Pan Pacific every Saturday. So unless it rains, which I don't I don't think it will, but um, yeah. we're going to be there Saturday. <laughs> and come see Mr. C in person, you guys. All right. Yeah, Mr. C in person. He's taller yeah. than my... Not everybody knows how tall he is. He's a like, giant. He's a, he's not a giant. He's a, he's a tall drink tall of water. I'm a tall dude, and he's taller than me. I'm 6'2", and he's got a couple inches on me. He's Damn. Like more than one Damn. place. <laughs> oh, Carol. Carol. Well, you, don't know. Some, you don't know. You don't know, Carol. Carol's putting Mr. C on all her live shows, hoping that something might happen after the show. I know what she's doing. There ain't she's nothing wrong with that, Poppy. Carol. You're doing it. You're on the right track. Persistence is key, Carol. <laughs> Just keep, get that there. Oh my the God. rumors are true. The rumors are true. You guys. Right. Oh wow. It's gonna be Mrs. C in a minute. Mrs. C. Hey. Hey. Carol you know, C. Well, give her some of that C. You know what I'm mean? saying? <laughs> right. Oh my and God. That long C. C. You know what I'm mean? <laughs> Wow. And uh, I want to take a moment. I know I I announced it on Facebook that I got a horrible diagnosis. I. I got diagnosed with breast cancer. Say goodbye to my beautiful hair. I have to start chemo probably soon. And I want to thank all the people that donated to my GoFundMe. I can't believe it. I uh, put just my out-of-pocket medical expenses will be like 8000 something. And uh, I've gotten over $11,000 already in like two oh. days. Nice. It's amazing. Oh. And I wow. love looking at all the names, the people that I know from, from my life in the past and, and present friends and... Uh, it's such a wonderful feeling of support, and um, I'm going to keep doing the shows as long as I can. Hopefully, I'm not, like, too sick to function, but if I am, uh, you guys will just have to go on without me because we'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, enjoy my hair while it lasts. I'm going to be cutting it. I'm going to probably do a live video. I'm going to be cutting it, like, this short, and then uh, and then sewing, sewing it into wefts to be later used as hair extensions one day. Or something because I mean I don't want to just let it fall out one by one that's the worst or in clumps Ugh. so anyway I'm gonna do it all one day and I'll probably do it live on video uh, shaving my head well so. for what it's worth from a man you're gonna look awesome with short hair you're gonna look super cute you have such hair. a beautiful face and really wonderful bone structure you're gonna look great with short hair i agree i agree really like trust super, me super super cute you're gonna be really Yes, and I didn't Thank know this, you. so I I've never had short hair, me. but I kind of wanted it. When I was like in high school, I used to joke around about, oh, I'll shave my head one day. So I'll get to see what my head looks like. If Hopefully it's round and doesn't have a lot of problems. <laughs> I'm going to go donate to your GoFundMe while we're here. I'm going to find it on Facebook. I didn't oh, know. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So anyway, I, it's just, I, I was amazed. I almost didn't put it on Facebook, but I thought, you know what? How, how am I going to hide it? People are going to find out eventually. It's better mm -hmm. to just... Put it out there and say it and uh and i've been overwhelmed with such wonderful encouraging comments that i've gotten so thank you to everyone who's been supporting. you're gonna beat that no problem thank you yeah it has good odds actually i mean the, the doctors i went to said that there's an 85 percent survival rate at 15 years right. so the, the odds are good but it's still going to be rough because i have to do chemo, I have to do mm. surgery, I have to do radiation, all of that stuff. And it's going to be a long, hard road. So mm. it, it still sucks, even if I survive, but I'm doing it. Got to do what you got to do. You know, yeah. I wish I could just, oh, just forget it ever happened and go back to before I went to the doctor. But uh, in that case, it would just grow and I would not 
be in a good place. So anyway, all right. Thank you guys. And uh, let's just move on and get started with the show. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Mr. C, and you can uh, introduce your first comic. All righty, all right. So we're ready for the Dive Bar Comedy Show. Once again, well wishes to our main girl, Joanna Petrie, Wild Joe. We wish the best recovery for you at the Dive Bar Comedy Show. Thank you. Nah, that's what I'm talking about. So let's get ready for this Dive Bar Comedy Show. We're going to hop right into it, get it real fired up. We got a fireball coming to the stage. Are you guys ready for this comedian? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. yeah. That's, right, that's right. That's right. So this gentleman right here is a ball of fire. He is automatic and remote control, just like his initials, RC. Smooth. He can hit you from a distance. He can hit you close. And all it takes is a couple of batteries like that thing is why he keeps in the drawer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you guys get ready. Can I get a clap, 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 Mr. Dick Chasler. Well, that's some fucking liberty, isn't it? <laughs> I ain't never shook your hand, dude. All right. Well, okay. I didn't know I was going first, but uh, hi, everybody. Nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Uh, again, to Carol, of course. Uh, so thank much big thank you for uh, having me on the show. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who, know, who don't know me, my name is Richard Chasler. My pronouns are I and me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. In case you're wondering, yes, this is my real hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I walked into the salon and went, hey, give me the Jewish accountant. <laughs> <laughs> fucking bored right now. I am a qu I'm quarantined. I'm like taking this whole thing kind of seriously. You know, I just, I want to get the hell out. Like I want to go visit friends, you know, like I just, I want to go to my friend's house and like play a joke. Like I need to just, I, I need to like walk into my friend's house, ask to use the bathroom and then like take a bath. <laughs> <laughs> ah. You know, stay in there for like an hour, bring a joint and a book, get pruney. <laughs> Use the little rose soaps you're not supposed to touch. <laughs> you know, just I, I just need to get out of the house. I am. I'm I'm a copious marijuana smoker. Mm -hmm. And according to my doctor, my chronic bronchitis makes me high risk. So I uh, I've been taking the quarantine thing seriously from day one. I've been sequestered so fucking long. I feel like an OJ juror. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, now I know what Anne Frank felt like. <laughs> Except she only had to worry about the Nazis. Mm -hmm. I have to worry about everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I learned two very important lessons since I've been quarantined in COVID. One, lots of people think that they can cook and make funny videos. <laughs> and two, most people cannot cook or make funny videos. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my own little lesson there. Um, it's very difficult for me. You know, I, uh, I cook, actually. I like to cook. I admit it. Being the wine guy, I cook a little bit. And I eat a lot of popcorn. I like a popcorn guy, you know. So I've had this time and, like, I perfected my enchilada game. So, like, I wanted to perfect my popcorn game. So, uh, yeah, I see your face, man. I did. I perfected my enchilada game. All home. Like, I went, I went back. Like, I, like, like your grandma made them. Yeah. <laughs> so then I wanted to make the popcorn good. And I read online that uh, if you want to make the popcorn taste like the movie theater popcorn, you have to pop it in coconut oil. Mm. <gasps> so I'm looking at my lube. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, you can cook with that? <laughs> By the way, Carol, how long have I been working on that joke? No, I know. <laughs> how long? <laughs> we finally fixed the punchline the other Yay! night. Thanks to in another room. Seriously, how long have I been working on that joke? Like months, dude. Like months. Oh my god, so fucking long. That's hilarious. Since last year. <laughs> totally. <laughs> it's hard being perpetually single. Like I'm a single guy. I I uh, make sure you give me like a one minute light, please. Yeah, you are. Um, 
I'm a single guy. I'm single because I was I was with a girl for a long time and, and uh, we broke up right before uh, COVID, like in December of right before COVID, like I dumped my girlfriend. I had to, her birthday was coming up. And um, <laughs> so I've been single now through this whole thing. And it's not easy for me because as you can tell, I've got a lot of testosterone. And uh, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I've, uh, I've been, uh, I've been jerking off so much. My right hand has developed feelings. <laughs> Not funny. I opened my apartment door the other day with my left hand. It got jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been watching a lot of porn. I'm not going to lie. I, in fact, I've uh, watched a lot of porn, so much porn. I think I've seen all the porn. <laughs> A to Z. You want to see something? Tell me. I will let you. You want to see like Jewish Swahili midgets? I'll tell you where to go. I found it by accident. <laughs> I've watched so much porn. I'm now back to jerking off to Playboy magazine. Mm. Yeah, I've gone full circle jerk. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, I, uh, it's hard because you know, I'm a sports fan and I'm cooped up and COVID is like killing it for me. It's like the NFL playoffs right now. I'm watching NFL playoff games and no one is in the stands. It's like watching XFL games. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I gotta go. I got the one minute. I don't know how much time I did after that. My name is Richard Chasler. Follow me everywhere and donate to Joanne's, jo <coughs> Joanne's GoFundMe, please, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about Ross with Richard Chasler. Yeah. yeah. Next time you call me Dick, I'm going to spend my entire seven minutes laying you out, by the way. <laughs> no, no, wait. I called you Big Dick. Oh, that yeah. I can live with. Well, I am Jewish. I'm hung like a salami at Greenblatt's. I mean, I'm not going to lie. But you took half before I had a say. You know, my first words were, what the hell are you doing? You know, it was a... <laughs> well, you know, the Dot Bar Comedy Show, we always have opportunities to learn about different things. And we talked about two things tonight, height and penis size. Now, did you know that only 3% of America, uh, men worldwide are uh, over six foot three? And like six to 10% in America are over six foot three. So it's very rare. Did you know the average man's penis size on the planet is five inches? Oh. Really? You got, hey, you're anywhere around five inches or more? And you got five and a half, you're packing heat. So I don't, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you this thing, you know, I'm six foot four, so I, I feel like I could fucking fly right now. Jeez, you have no idea. Five inches average? Cow knows, cow knows. For every guy that's six inches, there's another guy that's four inches. Think about Ooh. that. <laughs> for everyone that's seven, there's a guy that's only three. Well, so I mean, sorry for him. Yeah. <laughs> that's just a big clue. His argument could be he's slightly below average. Like, I'm just slightly <laughs> below average. And you guys got to remember, it's not the motion in the ocean. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's not the size of the boat. It's the motion in the ocean. There you go. Oh, oh so I, 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 I was like, so like, like, is it the size of the ocean? ocean? Like, what are you just talking about? <laughs> <laughs> In the street version, it's not the size of the thigh. It's the, the how the twerk moves. Oh, shit. Okay. I hope Bye, that helps clear things up for you guys. So let's give another round of applause for Richard Chesler. Yay! <laughs> On the street, they call him King Cock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> yes, they do. So the next gentleman coming to say is also another family favorite. Since we got four gentlemen and one lady, we're gonna sandwich her together like a porno movie. So we're gonna have a lady coming up next. But right now we got another classy gentleman, family fave coming to the stage. This gentleman right here, I like his name because he sounds like a Jim Carrey character or some shit like that. It's fucking ridiculous. It's the greatest thing ever. Or his parents just really like to read books. One of the mm. two. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh my god, dang, Carol's smoking a cigarette. I want to smoke a cigarette now. Oh, all right, I'm ah. distracted, girl. All right, back to the show. <laughs> okay, I guess I really want to enjoy that. So, we're about to get ready to this next comedian. Are you guys ready for this next comedian coming to the stage? Can I get, yeah? 
Yeah. 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 That's right. That's right. So we got to bring this guy to the stage. so proud. So I need you guys to chant with me. So we're going to be like a sports game, okay? So I need you guys to go chip, 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 chip,
Hey, my brother, I heard a beautiful, strong black lady just got into the White House. What is her name? I was like, uh, Kamala Harris. He was like, Asalaamu Alaikum. Now, what is that lady's name? <laughs> <laughs> So lake of some lime, my brother. <laughs> What's that lady's name? Hilarious. <laughs> um, okay, one minute. Uh, let's see. So masks, masks are fucking weird. Masks are fucking because, like, even even fucking greetings have changed. Have you noticed that? Like mm. greetings have changed. Like I, I've changed. I've realized this. Like, have you noticed? Like, like you know, like back the fuck up is the new good morning. It's like, yo, back the fuck up and a back the fuck up to you too. I think that's my time. Thank you very much, y'all. You've been chip Nicholson. Yeah. I'm the round of applause with Chip Nicholson. Woo! That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Dropping the knowledge, giving you all his personality. And that's right, ladies. You know what I'm saying? If you like uh, wine, uh, old criminal stories, and a drop of racism, you hit up Chip Nicholson. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank you some of that. Mm. He's going to make a bottle talk to you. You know how some people say they can make a booger talk? He can make a bottle talk. That sounded nasty as hell, man. <laughs> I don't know you if your voice you or what, but you said you're going to make a bottle talk. I was like, I want to meet Chip Nicholson. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, he's at the strip club. It'll work. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> tell you. Good, good, good. So that's what I'm talking about. Another great performance by another wonderful class comedian. We're going to move into our next comedian. Let's give one more round of applause for Chip Nicholson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about. So this next community coming to the States is a classic family favorite. Another wonderful lady. She is all types of things. If you like smoking cigarettes, if you like using a bit of foul language, if you like being a bit saucy, and if you like your women feminine and a little poofy in the hair, which <laughs> word on the street is, that hair sucks dick. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so you guys better get ready. Can I get a clack, 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 clack? my baby from across the pond, Miss Caroline Lightfoot! Thank you, thank you so much, but uh, my hair does not like people talking about it, so... <laughs> um, anyway, I've done a, a New Year's resolution. I've decided to stop being so self-centered. Um, I've, I've made a resolution not to talk about myself. I will speak to other people, ask them to tell me about me. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, I, I, I feel that I should be of service and, you know, I decided to do some volunteer work. Uh, because it's, you know, it's satisfying helping others. So I... Uh, volunteered at the suicide uh, prevention hotline and you know uh, it felt good to do something for other people but I've got to tell you the people that ring up are a bunch of losers <laughs> I mean they're so boring all of them what that's it have I have I hit a nerve here that no one had a laugh on that <laughs> everyone is silent oh my god God, well, listen, <laughs> up, right? he's droning on and on and on <laughs> about his, uh, uh -huh. had a date in, in six months and that, uh, you know, he wants to top himself because of it. And I said, for God's sake, you haven't had a date in six months. I've had split ends for 12 months and no condition <laughs> is working. You don't see me jumping off a building. <laughs> and there was this other woman, she said to me, you know, she's got so much debt, she can't pay her rent, she owes everyone. And I said, for God's sake, Use your womanly wiles. Go out, sleep with a few people, a few guys. You'll soon pay your rent. Well, anyway, I'm happy to say that she called me to thank me. 
uh, not only has she paid her rent, she's now living in a very nice place. Um, <laughs> you know, she has had to set up a GoFundMe page for her to pay for her herpes and syphilis and HIV. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, she's happy. <laughs> On another note, um, you know, I'm thinking with a new president tomorrow. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. thinking we need. Tomorrow. Yes, we need new laws. And I was thinking about the, the, what is important. And what I've done is I've written them down and I'm going to send them to Biden. I'm sure he's going to take one look at this, this paper here and he wants to pass these laws. Now, number one, um, it will be mandatory that ugly people must continue wearing their masks long after the <laughs> Also, boring people will have to have their vocal cords removed. Otherwise, <laughs> we'll put them all in a room together and they can talk to each other to eternity, you know. Uh, now, this is very important and I think the women are going to agree. Fluorescent lighting should be illegal immediately (laughs) and the only actually the only lighting that will be legal will be candlelight um women under the age of 30 that are good looking will not be allowed to approach or be in the vicinity of women over 50. (laughs) (laughs) also women with the new health care scheme Women with wrinkles will be given a free facelift or the suction, and three times a year they can get Botox free of charge. Um, wives of men that have small dicks will be given a free complimentary magnifying glass and a pair of tweezers. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, men with comb overs will be forced to walk around with a placard that says, I'm not fooling anyone. (laughs) (laughs) How much time do I have? Because I want to talk about something. I've got a minute, let's hope I can do it. Because I've been thinking about back when I was a kid and how my mum wouldn't let me cry. Whenever I started crying, she said, I'll give you something to cry about. Now, go to your room. (laughs) And wow. now, it was a long, long time ago, and 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 uh, a while back, I had what's called a near-death experience. You know, I'm sure you've heard about it, and hmm. I had, and it was exactly that. Suddenly, I I saw them working on my body, and then there was a light, and then a, a tunnel, and I was drawn to it, and then at at the end of the tunnel was my mother, oh. and I was like. <laughs> Mummy, mummy. And she said, I'll give you something to cry about. Now go to your room. <laughs> I'm going, what room? What room do I go to? What room? <laughs> Next thing you know, I woke up in the hospital. And they say that these near-death experiences change you. Well, it certainly did, that's for sure. I mean, no rush to go over to the light, I can tell you that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Caroline Langford. Yeah, another round of applause for Caroline Langford. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. <coughs> but I loved her suggestion of some laws. Uh, actually, I am running for president as an independent for 2024, and I want you to vote for all independents, not just me, mayor, city councilman, all that. Let's root out all of the both major parties. We can get rid of them all in four to eight years. And all we have to do is only vote independent for everything we choose. That's a whole nother story. Also, one of my policies is Medicare for All, where I'm going to freeze eggs for women as part of that. So you older women will be able to compete with the younger women. That's right. You can knock out a baby, too. So you'll take that young bitch out. You get what I'm saying? I got your back, sis. I got your back, Carlin for president. Let's write me in. Let's get me in there. So once again, another great thing. We got to learn a little bit. We got to hear some educational moments. And she schooled us on brilliant games. So another round of applause for Caroline Langford. 
All righty, righty, right, right, right. So we got two more comedians coming to the stage. Going to knock them out back to back like Cook Crack in the place that Shaq done dunked the ball that he called a girl kind of fat with a back. And she never did the thing on the track because she had slack. And she did like cack a lack, cack, cack. That's what I used to say when I did a crossover. So let's get it ready. So you guys ready for the next comedian? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. 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 Right, right. So this gentleman has a great name. His name is also transgressed across many television shows and films. There are many sets in the world doing great yeah. work. So that means this man is doing great work. He also works with children up mm. close, up close, small children. These are disease factories. This man works up close with disease factories that act like drunk men. Mm. Mm. That's right. So you better show this man some respect. Are you guys ready to get it down? Well, the man that we call Teach in the streets, can I get a yeah? Yeah! For Seth, I will smack your kid to death. What <laughs> Oh my God. Uh, a couple comments, Mr. C. I am not one of the good Seths. Uh, I don't know what you're expecting. It's not Seth MacFarlane. It's not Seth Green. It's Seth Woodward. Uh, <laughs> Mr. C, you, you said I work close with children. That is the wrong way to speak about working with kids. He's very close to children. <laughs> no, don't say that ever again. I will get fired if you imply anything close to like, anything like that. Don't, ugh. I don't want to work that close with them. <laughs> uh, you're right. Uh, I, I do. I do teach. I te got a job at the beginning of the year teaching uh, third grade, and it is fucking impossible to teach during a pandemic. It is these kids get it. Worse, they don't get it at all. They put it this way. Not one of them is wearing their mask. Not Ooh. they just fucking come up to you and breathe on you, and they're like, "What's the problem? I'm just sharing my air with you." It's fucking children are gross. Ch I watched <laughs> one kid chew on his mask and then put it back on. Oh no! Like, oh, you got your flavor from it, and now you're gonna use it again. You're gonna recharge it. That's disgusting. Oh, uh, I. This has made me not ever want to have kids. Put it that way. Uh, I uh, Caroline was talking about uh, people, you know, wearing masks and ugly. People. This is the golden age for ugly people, you guys. This wearing our masks is the best dating life I've ever had. I have Sharia eye laws. They're my eyes are my best quality. So this is just like showing off my best parts. I am. <laughs> killing it in the game uh <laughs> i hope this continues i never want to take off my mask i have that like <laughs> chips losing it <laughs> uh, uh, sharia eye laws yeah uh, sharia lies i love it um no i feel like it's never gonna be better for me i'm in my first serious relationship i believe because of the mask it just hit like all of this Below my nose, I look like a completely fine person, but with everything together, I am undateable, I feel. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's great though, I, I'm enjoying it. You gotta look on the, for the silver linings and the fact that it's hiding my ugly face is the best part. Um, Richard was talking about people learning to cook. Everyone got a skill during quarantine, everyone learned to cook bread or everyone uh, learned to draw or, or remodel their house. I was one of the people that learned to cook. I didn't make the videos. The only proof I have is that I got fat for quarantine. That's, I feel like that's the best indicator of someone who can cook. They're like, I'm learning to cook. Okay, are they getting fat? They learned to cook. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I learned to make jambalaya. I didn't know how fat jambalaya makes you. That, I, I have made... <laughs> Probably 10 big fucking pots of jambalaya. And it has made me fatter than holy hell. And I'm enjoying every moment of it. Before quarantine, I used to go rock climbing every day. Now I just eat jambalaya every day. I feel like it's an even trade. <laughs> I'm not losing anything in quarantine. Mm. Um, I briefly quarantined with my girlfriend's uh, family for like two weeks in April. And uh, I... I feel like quarantining has changed people's social skills. Like it's, 
eliminated people's social skills. I went down to live with them for like two weeks and uh, I found out they didn't like me because I'm fat, Mm. which is weird because they're also fucking fat. Like it's (laughs) it's so weird. It's like, we could go to a buffet and be friends if you let this happen, you fat bastards. I don't understand what you're doing. Um, we, they're doing something called the blue zone diet. Have you guys heard of this? Mm -hmm. It's, it's food based on different areas of the world where they live longer. It's mostly Mm -hmm. vegetarian. In fact, it's like 97% beans. I eat, I ate Mm -hmm. beans the entire time I was there. And dear God, did you guys know you can prolapse because of beans? You (laughs) you poop out your own butthole because of beans. Like I got there. It was awful. I'm never looking at beans the same way again. (laughs) You guys know there's more than one way to make beans? What the fuck is this diet? (laughs) I thought refried was the only way you can do beans. I don't know. I, I, it's, it's weird. Um, I was, um, I was born on a Tuesday. Uh, and I think that set the tone for my entire life because Tuesdays are the <laughs> asshole of the week. And I feel like I got an asshole of a life. Like, <laughs> Tuesdays, anyone born on a Tuesday is not going to have a good time in this world. I feel like the people who are having fun, they're born on Fridays, they're born on Saturdays. What am I supposed to do with a Tuesday life? Like, you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> I don't believe in horoscopes, but I feel like the day of the week you're born on definitely is a heavy indicator of how you're going to turn out. Mm. Um, And I got Tuesday. (laughs) All right, guys. Uh, That's my time. Uh, Have a, it's it's been wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's right. Give her applause for Seth Woodward. Hell yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You got it. Come on. Keep going. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> for the last part of my minute. Excellent. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Seth, Seth does a lot of great stuff too. A bunch of great learning experiences in his stuff and whatnot. Just for speed's sake, I'm going to keep it moving back to back like a crack. My man, Seth, don't worry about it, brother. One day, Seth Woodward will mean something to everyone. (laughs) Goddamn right. Or at least a little shit kid in your class. (laughs) I hope they have some PTSD (laughs) involving Mr. Woodward. Well, you know, you know, hey, you know, I mean, I mean, if you don't show at least one of your kids. I used to work in schools. Um, I've actually had to shake a few of my kids into sense (laughs) and then explain to their parents, so. (laughs) I'll I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah, just... And then when the parents come and tell you, like, no, they was acting crazy. I had to shake the shit out of them. They're just like, oh, okay. What's wrong with their eyes? They're still moving. Oh, I just had to shake them a bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just shake them until they stop moving. And if they don't, they just put them down their way. That, that was my asleep. rule. He's asleep forever. That, yeah, yeah. Me. My rule is don't leave any bruises. It's so cool. <laughs> That's how you, that's how you raise kids <laughs> and teach them. So once again, another round of applause, everybody, for Seth Woodward. All right, 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 right. So we're going right into our next community. This next gentleman got a real cool, smooth name. He's actually fresh and new to Zoom. So we got to make sure we treat him real good. He's fresh and new to the Die Bar Comedy Show. So we always save our cherries to the end because we want to pump them just right. Two pumps. <laughs> so this is another first time comedian coming to the stage. And this gentleman is kind of cool. We, we need a, a good way to bring him up. We got to fire it up. We got to fire it up. So, okay. So we got to act like we're at a gladiator arena. And this comedian mm-hmm. is about to come out and fight the lions and slay, I guess, Donald Trump, if we all don't like him. Joe Biden, mm-hmm. if you're not a Trump guy, right? So what I need you guys to do, we got to build up a war like, uh, yeah. So on right, one, two, three, we're just going to cheer like we're cheering at a football game. One, two, three. Yeah! 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 Kill Trump Biden. Kill Trump Biden. The brand Williams. Hilarious. Thank you. Thank you. That's the best intro I've ever been given on stage or in Zoom anywhere. Thank you.
I've never felt so special. Thanks, guys. I'm happy to be here. I chose uh, this lovely Chili's uh, Bar and Grill as my <laughs> bar tonight. Uh, make sure to order the Presidente Margarita. They're on sale. Mm, yeah, don't get the uh, don't get the queso. All right, hi everybody. <laughs> it's great to be here. Um, I, I haven't done a Zoom show yet. This is my first one. I haven't had a performance since March. Um, <laughs> But I'm really happy to be here. This is this is uh, this is really fun, and I can't wait to do it again. Um, so whoever has a show, book me. I'll probably start a show soon. Yeah, book me. I live in LA too, so I can do anything. Uh, uh, anyways, so uh, yeah, I've been uh, at home like the rest of you. Uh, I have some quarantine goals that I'm working on, like probably most of you have. Uh, my first quarantine goal is uh, not to make a baby, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make a baby. Uh, so I'm talking pull out method. I'm talking pull around method. I'm talking push method. Uh, push methods where uh, I push my girlfriend across the room when I'm about to uh, <laughs> jack. <laughs> about to eject, I just shove her across the room. Uh, eject also sounds like an electronic uh, car jack, which is kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, my car broke down. So I had to call the mechanic to uh, ejaculate me. <laughs> my second quarantine goal is to uh, avoid obesity I'm trying to avoid obesity Good it's, luck. it's coming after me uh mm. i'm trying to keep my weight under control but if i keep eating chips ahoy my muffin top is gonna bust out of my pants like a bunch of biscuits <laughs> if i don't if i don't stop eating little debbie snacks i'm gonna turn into the pillsbury fuck boy hey. <laughs> <laughs> If I go to the better. grocery store, I'm going to have to start wearing mom jeans just to keep it all in. <laughs> <laughs> if I keep eating pad thai, the Oompa Loompas are going to come out and roll me away. Chips are fucking hoy. <laughs> My third quarantine goal is uh, try not to start a podcast. That's my <laughs> Why not to start a podcast? A very wise woman once told me, <laughs> never start a podcast. Too many podcasts. I'm not watching any of them. I'm not really watching any Netflix. The only thing I've been watching is edd.ca.gov. Shout out to unemployment. <laughs> uh... Thanks. Shout out to unemployment, keeping me alive. Uh, yeah, me and the United States government, we're about nine months away from being uh, all squared up. Pretty good. <laughs> uh, I'm half Puerto Rican and half Texan. <laughs> those didn't know, uh, which is 50% plantain and 50% plantation. Hey. <laughs> which one's which? They have plantations in Puerto Rico. Uh, hey, really? They used to. They used to. Uh, <laughs> my mom is an important figure in Puerto Rican history. My mom's an important figure in Puerto Rican history. <clears throat> she actually invented the. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also uh never mind I'll get I'll tell you about that later Puerto Ricans were a lot like Mexicans we're just harder to find so we're basically special edition Mexicans and that's why Puerto Ricans actually listen to their music so loud we just want you guys to find us we're just trying to hang out honestly like <laughs> if, uh, in history. what was that forget it not a good, not a good time to do crowd work. I just discovered. Thank you. <laughs> I just figured that out. I'm putting it. I'm putting the pieces together. Not a good time for crowd work. I'm gonna <laughs> crowd work on Zoom. Cut that out. Yeah. Uh, whatever. My father. <laughs> <is> a, <laughs> my father. He's a full-blooded Texan cowboy. Mm. A full-blooded Texan health inspector cowboy. Uh -oh. You should see him walk into a bar. He flings the door open. The music stops. Everybody turns to look at him. A drunk guy falls off the balcony. Ah! <laughs> Bartender runs out the back door and escapes on horseback. And my dad's like, that's it. You motherfuckers get a B. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up in Texas, I ate, uh, I was raised eating a lot of fast food. Thanks. One minute. Uh, yeah. Growing up in Texas, I was raised eating a lot of fast food. Um, one time I even won the uh, McDonald's Monopoly sweepstakes. Really? Yeah, I won 50 pounds. Hey. Uh, 
<laughs> and unlike the other big winners of the McDonald's Monopoly sweepstakes, I didn't lose it all in the first year, okay? I invested <laughs> it. I held on to it. I ended up turning it into 80 pounds. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> My mom would cook uh, Puerto Rican food at home sometimes. She would make her famous dish, pork, with a side of pork. <laughs> Oh, there'd also be a plantain have you ever had a plantain mm. plantains taste how the word plantain sounds uh. <laughs> <laughs> they taste plantain <laughs> all right well, when i was a kid my dad didn't want us want us to watch uh certain inappropriate television shows like he was very strict about what tv shows we could watch when i was a kid uh inappropriate tv shows like sabrina the teenage witch that was inappropriate for my dad to be fair, the times that I did watch Sabrina the Teenage Witch, I did learn a lot of actual witchcraft mm. right after Boy Meets World. You know, it was, uh, it was Family Matters, Boy Meets World, followed by the teaching of the dark arts of Satan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's my time. Thank you again uh, for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. That's why right. another round of applause for Sid. He stays off the grid, William. <laughs> That's all right. And that was our last comedian and whatnot. And a classic Puerto Rican homie, a rare Puerto Rican and whatnot. Very you know rare. What and now I'm from Philly and whatnot, so Puerto Ricans are actually very common. They're like the rest of the black people. Oh, in shit. Philly. See, yeah. in Texas, it was me and my mom, and that was it. Oh, yeah. Oh, but I'm in LA now. It's seven to 12 Puerto Ricans here. I'm one of them. I know. <laughs> and the thing is, they all have a flag on their car. Mm. So you know. I, <laughs> I would if I had a car. <laughs> yeah, I definitely would. I definitely would. I actually, hang on one second. Please don't end the show yet. Shut up. You got a flag. Shut up. You got a flag on you. I'm gonna do some music. Do, 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 do. So this, this is for when I get a vehicle. It's the party. Ah, you, yes. you gotta have it. It's a, you gotta have it. You can't be Puerto Rican. Yes. You don't have this on your car. They they don't let you on the island. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. That's what I like about Greg. The Dive Bar Comedy Show bringing this full circle. I was just hoping Philly chilling with my Puerto Rican homies. And I think they must be like the people that's in the OC with the other guy. Because my Puerto Rican homies like, yo, fool. Yo, I don't give a damn. Yo, he, he actually used the N-word a few times. because Puerto Ricans use the N-word a lot. Yeah, we but he's like, yo, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. And he's like, yo, I don't want the whole COVID. No mask. And I'll be getting tested. And I'm good, yo. And I'm just like, yo, fam, you know it's real, right? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and he's just bragging about it. And I was just like, yo, you've been spreading that shit. Dude, See, this is why no. Puerto Rico hasn't been a state this whole time, dude. <laughs> it's people like that that prevent Puerto Rico from being a state. <laughs> <laughs> and he's bad at Spanish. I'm like, yo, you talk to your grandma because his grandma, she's lived in Philadelphia for 30 years, doesn't know a drop of English. Um, so when I come there, it's just like, it's Jeffrey Sinquentra and whatnot. And I got to learn. And he, I'm like, yo, talk to him. He's like, yo, I don't, really, I don't really know Spanish that good and shit. And I'm like, the fuck? Anyway, I'm not going to get into it right now. I don't want to, I don't want to make Puerto Ricans mad at me. Right? Straight up. I, I'm a Puerto Rican. I can't speak Spanish either. I'm a big fucking phony. <laughs> oh I'm a big fucking phony, dude. Like my friend no, I, I speak a little bit. Me. I can speak the amount to get by in a kitchen in a restaurant. That's about all the Spanish I can speak. That's enough. I, I bet you your dad liked that though. Cause I, he said he's a cowboy, right? Yeah, dude. There you go. Give him a B. Give him a B for his Spanish. Another round of applause, everybody, for Sid Williams. All righty, right, right, right. So we're going to get out of here. I'm not going to do nothing too crazy because, you know, it's Martin Luther King Day and I want to be respectable and whatnot. So, but it does have me reflecting on my youth. So I'm going to do a quick freestyle, uh, uh, which I call my biography because I always need to practice it anyway. And it's good to practice things when you're drunk. So if you ever have to bust it out in front of people, you can nail it. Go through the comedian's names. Miss Joe's going to take us home. <clears throat> I surface to the world as the third of a man and second of a woman. Economy is booming. Check to check, no more looming. Let's move into a bigger space. Too many living in apartment place. 
so begins the case of that product me, Mr. C. Born and raised in the hood, my nary. Mental looking kind of scary. The neighbors say, how dare he? Talk about the hood like it's ghetto. Take them to the bar and make their asses drink stiletto. Why not tell them about the background? Run for middle amount of Mac pounds. And everybody around the way is getting jacked down. And yo, I see the crack now. And it's killing me, you feeling me? The reef are steady healing me. I flash back to the fifth year. When I started school with no fear. Detail Montessori year. I went there. My only memory is eating sloppy Joe there. With my fro here. Next step is elementary. R.I.P. to the Wallen brother Tyree. Saint to where really dropped me. From K to eight. Religious rate. The family I state. What's up to the brother Nate? Don't worry brother Carla. Always make up late. And then I wake up late. I moved to the high school, fool. Shorty's looking good. They got me on the jewel. Short and skinny. Kind of cool. But quiet, though. Just loving pilot, yo. I stay in with you like the Hyatt, bro. I must attest. ENS was the best. The third best failed the stress test. So they made me take a rest. Then I lasted for about a year. Next step, Lincoln Nas here. So I miss my brother, K Digger. Beat money deep, risen in my cell to great. Then I had to fill my mental plate because I'm coming late out the gate. Graduate the ham done. Yo, I was Aunt Mon, like a concert by Fran Dunn. Plenty levels everywhere. Came and went, but yo, I still stare at the stars and say what could have been. I should have got it in. I let down my kin. Now I gotta sin just to eat. Not talking about holding heat, doing things just to get meat. Yeah, and I got the love for the lost and weak. Yo, you gotta love the words I speak. Woo! All right, all right, right. That's right, right, right. So let's keep it going. That's right for all of our community cases. Keep it going for our sister. Can't wait once again. Richard Chazler. Yay! That's right, that's right, that's right. You possibly had to got chip, the big bit, Nicholson. Yeah. yeah. We have Miss Sweet Goofy Baby, Caroline Lifestyle. Oh God, you made me feel like real soul for that. I was, I was like, <laughs> a 70s nigga with a perm. I had a perm for a second right there. Also, keep that clack, 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 clack going. For other comedians that came to the stage, Seth Woodward. <laughs> and Sid, the grand Williamson. Yeah. Yeah. Wild Joe, take us home. Tell me how we go. It's the Dive Bar Comedy Show. And I'm out, so I might have to get a home. Hey. Bye. That was awesome, Mr. C. I loved your rhymes. You're talking about uh, crack. Did you say something about crack in there or whack? Lack? You had some well, well, what it was was back when the 80s first came up, I was just becoming a teen and I was coming in the street and like my cousins, I had a cousin on crack and was like stealing shit and all kind of shit. So that was right around the time that I'm like, yo, the hood is all fucked up. You can't do shit about it. And right around after that, that's when I started smoking weed. And it's basically because, you know, people are basically self-medicating. We drink and smoke and take the pills. We're just trying to heal the pain. Nobody wants yeah. to be fucked up. Uh, there was it's just a public reaction. enemy. You know, uh, there was a public enemy line that I used to uh, love that says uh, something like, don't fear the crack of dawn, or is it the dawn of crack? And I just love that, like, uh, oh, that rhyme. Yeah. But uh, yeah. that was awesome. I loved it. It, yeah. it was a cool, cool sounding rap. So <laughs> anyway, you guys, I, uh, I had so much fun tonight. It was great to see everybody. And yeah. this is always the highlight of my week. Um, I'm going to be doing a live show at the Lexington. I don't know how they keep doing live shows there, but I'm performing on Thursday night live. Nice. And, uh, that'll be fun too. So anyway, for those of you who are watching, be sure to subscribe to our channel, wherever you watch. Uh, you could either do the live stream on Facebook, which is the best because you can comment and interact with people as you watch, or you could check out the replay wherever you listen to podcasts on the iTunes or the Android uh, apps or uh, at divebarcomedy.com. We are live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. And uh, it's always a good time. So I just want to thank all of our watchers and thank all of our comics and uh, say good night. See you right. next week. Yeah. Have a good one. Thank Bye. you. Thank you so much.